Some nurses have the ability to save lives, while others have the intention of doing the complete opposite. And as such, they will remain in the minds of horror lovers forever. Most people have a high level of trust in nurses, which is one of the things that makes them more terrifying. Patients and family members who are in a hospital have no choice but to put their trust into the medical staff and nurses. Tonight, prepare yourself for an hour of scary nurse encounters with the paranormal and supernatural. And if you didn't, do break that like button and subscribe. It really helps with YouTube algorithm. And now, story time. I used to work in a skilled nursing facility. I was usually assigned to the Alzheimer's ward. One night I'm in the linen room stocking my cart, and I heard someone shuffle up behind me, then I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned around and there was no one else in the room. The door was still shut too. Another lady started to complain that a man was coming into her room at night, again, Alzheimer's so I didn't think much of it, so to reassure her, I told her I'd check on her throughout the night. She complained of this man for every night for two more weeks when I asked her to describe him to me. He's real handsome, and wears a black suit. Oh. He's right behind you now, honey. That freaked me the F out. Of course there was no one behind me. She died the next night in her sleep. When I was a student, I got called in on a stroke patient. She had coded and they were doing CPR. They worked for 45 minutes, but she died. They cleaned her up, and called on the family to say goodbye. By the time the family left. She had been both brain dead and without a pulse for more than 45 minutes. Blood had filled her brain, and she was completely gray and started to smell. Suddenly, she sat up and called for her family. The nurses rushed to get monitors and equipment back on her. Started working on her again, she stabilized, said goodbye to her family, and promptly died a second time. I took care of a resident who had been slowly passing for a couple days. When she finally passed, her body was taken out right before my shift started. For anyone who doesn't know, there is a superstition that when someone dies, you have to open the window to let their soul out of the room. Well, when the previous shift informed me of her passing, I asked if they did that, because I always do just to be safe. They said no, that they didn't believe that sort of thing, and I shrugged it off and we all carried on. I started my usual routine and about 20 minutes into the shift, her call light went off. I went in there. The call light was plugged into the wall and laying on the bed. Turned it off. Figured it was something faulty. Even though her call light has never been faulty before, and went back to working. 15 to 20 minutes later it went off again. I turned it off. 10 to 15 minutes later it went off again. I turned it off, unplugged it to try to reset it. Went back to work. Went off again 5 to 10 minutes later. I finally opened the window. Waited a few minutes. Never went off again the rest of the night. I think the poor lady just wanted out. I work in a respite home for kids with severe disabilities I'm fairly new, but there are memorial plaques for a lot of the kids and adults who have used our service with regularity and then passed away. Anyways. One night. Like 2 a.m. I'm sitting in the office in our adult wing and I see a little boy wander into the living room. He looks fairly familiar, so I figure he's just on the other wing. I head out of the office to go bring him back to bed, and he's gone. I search everywhere, eventually heading over to the kid's wing to ask them to do a bed check for this little boy. Apparently we didn't have any kids matching his description in that night. I chalked it up to being awake all night and went back to my office. As I'm leaving in the morning, on a hunch, I check the memorial wall. Apparently, about three years ago, 
This little boy was the first child to pass away in the home. I've since learned he occasionally wanders the halls, and will go right up to counselors he knew and sign for apple juice before he disappears. Suffice to say, my new job has made me believe in ghosts. I used to work night shift as an assistant nurse. I used to like night shift because between jobs I could get some study done. The place I worked was in an old town in QLD Australia and the place was run by the Salvation Army and had been around for a long long time. A lot of the other people I work with have a lot of paranormal happening at that place but I had never experienced anything prior to this night. On night shift there are very minimal staff, so few that you carry walkie talkies on you to alert other staff if you need to do a two person job. There is one wing in the hospital that is run by one person and on that particular night I got that job. The facility is split by mobility and that particular wing I was in was extremely high care. Most of these people were bed bound and often unable to talk, feed themselves or do anything without a lot of staff assistance. So I'm sitting alone in this wing at the dining table doing some study and all of a sudden the buzzers go off in the end room. Most of these rooms are fitted with mat sensors near beds in case patients were able to somehow roll off the bed because with some patients we are not able to use bed rails, so I automatically think someone has fallen off their bed so I go to investigate while walking I call to the closest person as I think someone may have fallen off the bed. When I step into the room I get the earliest feeling like I'm being watched. I look to the bed where a man is sleeping. This particular patient was completely bed bound, high care and unable to move. He is in bed but both his bed buzzer and the mat buzzer is sounding very loudly. I call over my walkie talkie and tell the girl coming that I am okay and don't need her help but I can hear she has already reached the hall so she comes down anyway to see what's going on. She walks in the same as me, really confused and says she can't believe how cold the room is. We turn off the buzzers, check the patient is okay and leave. Now as we're walking back down the hall and chatting all of a sudden we hear two men talking loudly, something being moved like a piece of furniture and banging and suddenly the buzzer begins again. Freaked out we call to another to the on-duty night RN, registered nurse, and run to the room half expecting people to be in there. As we open the door the bedside table is in the middle of the room pushed over onto its side the bed which has its break still on was moved facing the opposite direction but the patient remained asleep. When the night nurse came we explained what happened and apparently in another wing about 10 minutes before the same thing happened while she was administering medication. I have plenty of other stories from other workers so if I have any interest I might post them. My sister has been a nurse for about 8 years in Southern and now Northern California. Worked in hospitals, med surge, tele, ICU, dialysis centers, and now a hospice nurse. She has a few stories from the hospital, things like children laughing, shadows, patients claiming they saw another dead patient when they had never met. One of the creepiest that she and the other nurses told me was about a patient complaining and scared that something was under their bed. He was older and confused so they didn't think much of it. Checked on him, responded to the multiple calls, and just tried to make him feel better. The next day, a new patient went into that room, another older person but not confused, and called to complain about something under his bed. They sort of brushed it off again after checking. The next night, a new patient in his 20s and completely coherent called crying that something kept running under his bed. They checked and found nothing but the patient was in such distress and shaking, they moved him. Happened quite a few other times as well. They never found anything but that was so creepy to me. Not sure if this is paranormal or not, but we live together now and she works as a hospice nurse. Every so often, she would scream or it'd hear her struggle or make weird noises in the middle of the night. I'd go to check and she'd tell me it was sleep paralysis. And explain what happened, that she saw a specific patient in her episode standing over her and growling, crying, or screaming. 
always a very scary dream. The next day, that patient would die. Happened about 13 times so far. Trips me out. Never anything paranormal, but I had an older patient who kept every piece of paper from ever hospital stay. His heart was in bad shape so I was desperately looking for anything to help our cardiologists out. I finally found his records from when he had heart surgery. It was in Paris, California in the 1980s. I was just reading a book about nurses who became serial killers, when sure enough I see records with the name Robert Diaz. I was the nurse for a man whose former nurse was a serial killer. I'm an emergency medical technician. One of my partners told me a story about an old fire station that used to be in use. He and his partner at the time were sleeping in the bunks and it's pitch black for them. This fire station kinda looked like the one in Ghostbusters, so I'd say that the building dated back to the 60s. Anyways, there's no one else in the station except for them. Their mini fridge in the room cracked and someone screamed Bishop. I'm not in the mood and then the fridge slowly closed. Another one of my partners said that they had a situation that it was at a similar time around the top. All of the firefighters were sound asleep. Sometimes in our bays, garage slash main doors to station, we keep the back doors to our ambulances closed. At that time my partner stated that they heard a loud thump, want to go inspect what happened, and they found the back doors open to the truck and their equipment, jump bag, on the floor. Also worked a lot of nights, and there's only one that legit put the shivers up me. Just before 6 a.m. on a general health care of the elderly ward, two staff nurses, one auxiliary and me, a student. Four bays but one was closed and just had the usual ward junk stored in it, OBS machines, drip stands, transfer equipment, spare bed tables, etc. Two nurses are in the bay setting up the morning IVs and I'm in the other bay doing 6 a.m. BMs. Auxiliary goes off to get an OBS machine. He comes into the bay with the weirdest look on his face. When I'm done with the blood glucose check I'm in the middle of, he says in an undertone, come and look at this. He leads me into the empty bay. There are wet footprints on the floor, starting halfway across the room. Now I know what you're thinking, he did it himself, or it was a wandering patient. That's what I'm tempted to think, too. Except the footprints went under a table and stopped at the window. No return footprints, no little jiggle like someone had put on shoes while standing on one foot, just straight up to the window. And they were small, and the auxiliary was a big bloke. Now, there's a chance it was one of the patients from a side room who snuck by us went into the closed bay with the sign saying no entry, somehow wet their feet, walked to the window and put their shoes back on, and then carefully moved the table over it. But it honestly seems rather far-fetched. Almost all of the patients on that ward had limited mobility and about half wouldn't have had the capacity to do such a complicated chain of events, either. Definitely gave us all the shutters and we were happy when the early shift came in. I'll start with the fact that this was up in the mountains, 8,000 feet altitude. This guy calls 911 and claims there is a snake in his hotel room, so we go to check it out with the fire crew. We show up to a guy freaking the F out saying there is a python loose in his room. Well after a few questions, he claims there is a piranha trying to escape from the python's mouth, but the spirits in the python's brain are telling the python that it can't let the piranha go. Okay, now we know something is wrong with this guy. We walk in the room to find a rolled up towel sticking out of the bathroom door door. The man had claimed he had trapped the python in the door and he was trying to let the piranha escape. We found acid and heroin inside of the rolled up towel. Dude was having a great time until the towel stole his drugs. More drug induced than paranormal, but the dude thought his towel was possessed.
I did my clinical as a certified nursing assistant in a memory care unit. I helped feed this woman. She never really moved. Never talked. It was like she was in a coma or something. I would will her into the dining room. I can hardly get any real food in her. I'm able to slide in some special ice cream. For days she doesn't move or have any response. I'm feeding her and talking to myself pretty much. After about 10 minutes she slowly turns her head and says oh hello then she rotates her head back her blank staring position. Super creepy. We got a call of trespassers at an abandoned hospital during the daytime. There was on-site security who kept it secure even though it was shut down. They swore they heard footsteps and talking on the second floor over the past few days. They locked down the entire perimeter and called us out there. There was no way out. We went in there with six officers and started from the seventh floor and systematically checked every single room down to the bottom floor. There was no power so we were lucky it was still daylight and there were a lot of windows. It was an older hospital so they left old CRT monitors from the 1980s and 90s in there. It was pretty eerie and reminded me a lot of the first scenes from The Walking Dead. We cleared down from floors 7 to 5 no problem. Once we hit the fourth floor it started getting weird. This was the hospital storage area. Instead of the big spacious rooms it was super cramped and cinder block walls. There were chain link cages all over the place with old locks on it. It seriously looked like a horror movie prisoner area where they locked victims up. It was also pitch black. The hospital was so big that we worked in two man groups on each floor but naturally split up as the floors opened up more. The third floor was a mental ward area so the padded walls and pitch dark rooms started to get me a little nervous. The second floor was by far the worst, the surgery ward. There were no windows, again it was pitch black, and there were large eerie operating rooms all over. In the middle of some of the rooms were large metal slabs where they would operate on people. I'm adjoining rooms they had huge peg boards where they stored the surgery power tools. How did I know it was power tools? They had marked the outlines of various drills, saws, and other painful looking devices. It was kind of freaky thinking about how many people had died in those rooms when they couldn't save them. I was definitely nervous clearing those rooms solo in pitch black with only a flashlight. We eventually cleared every single room on every single floor. And found nothing. The security guards swore up and down they always heard talking and footsteps down the halls though. We pretty much swore off that place and said not to call us anymore. I'm a paramedic, was an EMT at the time. Was taking a long distance transfer across Texas at around 3 in the morning. I had been driving for several hours after dropping the patient off when I thought I saw a dead body on the side of the road. Was thinking maybe I was seeing things. I turned around and went back to make sure I wasn't. I found a very dismembered body on the side of the road. While making sure that there were no signs of life, I hear a cry coming from the woods. Sounded like the witch noises from L4D. Shine our flashlights up and see a woman covered in blood crying in the fetal position near the woods. Turns out they were walking hand in hand when a drunk driver hit the person, but missed the woman. Pretty creepy. Canadian paramedic here. We recently attended a woman who had run into her neighbor's house at 3 AM, screaming that she was being haunted. We talked to her while the police went through her house. Apparently she had been on the computer when her blinds opened themselves. While she was up looking at the blinds her computer chair spun itself. She ran back over to her computer and found that something had put gum on the seat. Not the most threatening item, but she was panicked. The police had found nothing, no gum, and we decided that they would take her some place safe for the evening. We were just pulling away from the scene when the cruiser pulled up next to us. 
Turns out the back seat was haunted as well, and she ended up taking a ride with us to a comfy hospital bed. The house went up for sale that week and we have never been back. Is this story a chestnut? It was told to me in good faith by a psychiatrist friend. On the other hand, the people who told it to him may have been wrong. I live in a city with a psychiatric teaching hospital. Police in a well-known dodgy part of town had a guy come running into the station one night telling the desk sergeant his neighbors were secretly killing him by piping poison gas into his house. They took him up to see the doctors who said P-type schizophrenic. Break out the chlorpromazine, etc. A few days later the cops turn up at the hospital saying they found some crazy people living near the docks who were piping gas into their neighbor's house. I'm a tactical medic, I'm not going into which agencies, and I've been a medic for over 20 years. I responded to a call as a safety backup in an area that is known to be a high crime slash high drug area. It wasn't uncommon to request an additional set of hands if there was a safety issue at hand. Dispatch sounded a little iffy, so I asked for a regular police unit to be dispatched to the location as well, to assist with crowd control, one of the common reasons for getting a supervisor to an incident. I arrived at the address within about five minutes. No lights or sirens, but I did get a direct radio call from one of the senior medics and he sounded rattled which made me really want to get inside. However, when I get there I'm pretty much shocked into immobility for a second, that just doesn't happen. There's seven or eight people in the front yard, all praying. On their knees, praying. No screaming and yelling, no oi, Dios mio, no tantrums. Praying. Overseas, I've seen it, but I've never seen it here, on the front porch. I can see my medic through the open sliding glass door. He waves me in, and I'm there. The patient is an older woman with a history of a stroke, no other medical history that he's aware of. The initial call was for grandma not acting right, patient altered. When they arrived the family was praying at the bedside and in the living room. The grandson met them at the door and told them that she may be talking to horse, which he explained is like a trance. No drugs, but she may have taken some traditional herbs for medicine, yeah, I'm thinking weed and her shrooms. The apartment is grandma's house. Some ethnic touches, maybe Africa or the Caribbean. We're not in the house of a drug lord. I look at the medic. This doesn't even rate on the weirdness scale. I give him my best what the F? Look and he starts to lose his cool. They arrived and started ushering family out of the bedroom, again, crowd control. The family left for the living room, except for the daughter who stayed to help out. She explained that her mother had a stroke years ago, with some residual aphasia, simple translation, trouble speaking. She frequently switched languages in the middle of a discussion without realizing it, Spanish, French, and English. She was otherwise healthy, didn't take any medicines, blood pressure under control. At this point they were starting to take a look at grandma. She was lying on the bed, mumbling in something that wasn't English or Spanish. Most of our crews have a little bit of Spanish, at least. Her eyes were rolled back and she kept gnashing her teeth. Weird, but not a seizure. More behavioral than anything else. They were trying to talk to her and get her hooked up to the monitor when she suddenly stopped, raised her head and looked at the daughter and told her to get out in Spanish, my Spanish isn't that good. She still had her eyes rolled back, but still, behavioral weird. The daughter replied no, mama. When the weird started. The dresser on the other side of the room collapsed. The legs gave out on it, making it drop to the floor. Now I'm looking at this guy, just short of saying bullshit. His partner is still in the room with the patient, I can hear his voice and some other conversation or something. The medic tries to stop me with a weight, but I really felt like I was getting shined on at this point. I walk into the room, and it's a scene from The Exorcist, almost. Grandma is arched up so her belly is pointing at the ceiling. 
Not like a yoga pose or anything, her legs aren't right. The first thought in my head was tetanus, but she's vocalizing something. Gibberish, ranting rhythmically. The room is a mess. The dresser is across the room, four stubby legs appear to have collapsed. No lights, the other medic in the room has his headlight on. I tried the lights, but the switch was already flipped up. The lights blew out when we asked the daughter to step out. I'm getting annoyed at this point. Vital signs? EKG, anything? Come on guys. Yeah, the call is weird, but this is basic stuff. Body parts can be all over the place, but we still have to do our job. The monitor died when we started hooking her up. It had a full charge before we responded. I just held up my hand, get a manual BP, start working on getting her out of here the senior looks at me like are you kidding? How? So I reach over and grab the manual cuff out of the bag and start putting it on her arm. At this point the jewelry box thingy on the dresser falls to the floor. No idea how it happened. It looked completely stable on there when I saw it, but I'll admit, the lighting was really crappy and I could have missed it. I'll admit it, I jumped. The junior medic flat out cussed. I glared at him, grabbed his stethoscope and started checking. In the 30 seconds I had been in the room, grandma hadn't broken her pose. It actually made getting the cuff on her pretty easy. I was getting the stethoscope on her arm when she collapsed. Boneless dropped to the bed. Not grandma like at all. She turned her head and looked at me, eyes rolled up in the back of my head, but she met my gaze. Creepy, and the hairs were going up the back of my neck a little bit. She started chanting at me again but it didn't sound like anything. Her pressure was normal, heart rate was a little fast, but she's doing aerobics in bed. Then the bedside table fell over, and I almost wet myself. It was right there, and I didn't see anything act on it. Get her daughter in here, and let's get this done. He yelled down the hall, pissing me off more. As the daughter started walking down the hall, the bedroom door slammed shut. No draft that I could feel, and no one near the door, the medic was on the door jam side, almost got hit by the door. Grandma started talking directly at me at this point, with some of the words sounding spooky. I told the senior to go get the stair chair, keep the family out of the way, and get ready to go. I tell the junior that we're going to do a sheet transfer to the chair and to get her tucked in. He's looking at me like I'm nuts so I give him the stink eye until he nods his head. Grandma stops, gets quiet, and points at me you have no god. Your soul is naked for the fire and they will take it to burn and laugh over woe. English, and weird stuff at that. The daughter, at the door, is now crying. I hit the drug box, give her a couple of milligrams of liquid happy time and hope for it to kick in quick. I think about doing the one for you, two for me bit but I'm not quite there yet, over two decades, still haven't had that day. We get her wrapped up, strapped down, and off to the hospital. Called it a behavioral, and was done with it. Utterly bizarre. I can't explain the furniture malfunctions. I can explain the aerobics. I've seen some pretty fit elderly folks in my time. The weird language stuff. Dunno. She had a history of aphasia. The English and the soul stuff. I can't explain that. I'm more of an atheist than anything. I really believe that everyone's own religion is important to them, and them alone. However, of the people in the room that she could say that too, she hit the nail right on the head, the senior medic went back to the station house and actually called the chaplain. Dunno. Bizarre. EMT. Responded to an awful call on an interstate a few years ago, young kid and two elderly people killed and was enough of a mess to shut down the whole interstate for hours. Kid gets transported to local hospital, but is getting coded the whole way and pronounced after getting worked a while at the hospital. Paranormal part, two relatives in the car with the kid were separated on scene and taken to separate rooms in the hospital. 
Both said that seconds before the crash the kid said look mommy, an angel. My mom was a CNA that usually worked midnights for over 20 years. She has more than a few weird stories to tell, but the kicker came when I was really young, about 10. She was working at a small hospital in the town I grew up in. She was on the midnight shift as usual and they had recently had an old woman in her 80s show up to have a last ditch surgery to remove some pretty nasty cancer that came from years of smoking. Well a few weeks after the surgery the lady hit the service call button at like 2 to 3 am to get my mom's attention. My mom enters and she asks the woman what she needs, perhaps it's water or to use the bathroom. When she arrives the old woman was already upright with what my mom described as strong posture while sitting in bed. The woman looked her dead in the eyes and said in a very loving way, I have a message for you. Jesus wants to tell you that he loves you and he will be with you soon. Obviously my mother was a little off put and said, thank you, and went to get her supervisor who was on her smoke break to see what to do. This woman was supposed to be recovering from surgery and this was just a more than a little odd. Supervisor didn't want to leave her break naturally for something that wasn't an emergency and thought my mom was overreacting, but she agreed to go up and visit the woman with her and help put her to bed. Well they entered the room together and just so the supervisor could see exactly how well the old woman was doing, my mom asked her, I'm sorry honey, but could you tell me again what Jesus said? She said the old woman looked irritated now. She looked at a spot in the room where there was nobody there, and rolled her eyes and shook her head. She then said very forcefully, Jesus wanted me to tell you that he loves you and he will be with you soon. My mom turned to look at her supervisor but she had already left the room and was clear down the hallway. My mom said, thank you and told the woman to call her if she needed anything else. The old woman died a few days later and never spoke to her again. Now here is the kicker. The thing that sometimes will keep me up wondering about the supernatural, God, Jesus, and whatever. The woman had mouth cancer. She had her tongue as well as a great deal of other flesh removed in that surgery. This is my mum's nurse story hopefully you don't mind. One time back 20 odd years ago my mum was taking care or a terminal cancer patient who passed away and the family of the deceased was unable to visit the lady until the next day so the nurses decided to leave the body in the bed and put a blanket over her. So the next day mom brings the lady's family over to the bed and her daughter starts crying while sitting down next to the bed and this part she swears happened. She saw it, the daughter saw it and another nurse saw it. The deceased lady sits up takes off her ring and lies back down. No one has any explanation to how this happened. I'm a paramedic. I responded to a call which was dispatched as there are black creatures in my anus. When we were done having our laugh we went into this mid-sixties woman's apartment and she's bent over in the kitchen with baking soda all over her lips, her butt, everything. She's complaining of back pain. I'm asking her if she fell slash etc. No, the black creatures have been causing her back to butt pain because they reside in her rectum. She says look. There's one over there. She points to the dining room, covered in baking soda, no furniture, no creatures. My partner starts walking around the house, he comes back a minute later. Tells me to have a look. He takes over doing vitals. I proceed to the bedroom. The TV is on Mori and the couch is upside down, there is no bed. I peek in her bathroom. It's spotless and empty except for two things. A pile of multicolored miniature dollar store paint rollers, all glossy and used from a 2 liters tub of Vaseline two-thirds empty on the other side of the sink. I stand there for a moment putting two and two together, a chill runs down my spine. The whole place is near empty otherwise. We roll her out on the stretcher, all the neighbors are in the hallway watching us go by. They know. This is extremely common in my neurology clinic. 
Patients complain of being under attack by burglars, robbers, demons, ghosts, or other paranormal beings. They see these hallucinations, mostly at night. Small humans, Lilliputian hallucinations are common, and for whatever reason it is very common to see people in period garb. There is a page in the world according to Garp where an older fellow hallucinates Charlemagne's soldiers, night after night, standing around the fountain outside his window. That is the kind of thing my patients see. The diseases in which it is most common are Lewy body dementia and Parkinson disease dementia, which tend to have an earlier onset than Alzheimer disease. Patients with classic run-of-the-mill Alzheimer's disease rarely go this way. It depends on their medications and what sort of personality they have whether they just ignore these hallucinations, or whether they respond with paranoia by phoning police, prowling the house at all hours, or even getting a firearm and firing it at them. Obviously shooting guns at ghosts or repeatedly calling the cops because of hallucinations are things that aren't compatible with healthy community living. When I can't get these symptoms under control with drugs, these folks get institutionalized in homes for the elderly demented. I'm a paramedic and one night we got a call to assist law enforcement with an altered mental status. Typically, it's a drunk so my partner and I are annoyed the cop won't just take them to the hospital themselves. Anyways, that wasn't it. Cop had been called to a domestic. A man was arguing with a woman trying to force him in a car. Cop arrived, it dementia husband who was wandering and wife was trying to force him home, it was late. Cop convinced man to ride home in the cop car but once they got him home, he refused to stay. Cop was hoping we could convince him to stay home. Man insisted the woman wasn't his wife and he couldn't stay in some other woman's house no matter how beautiful she is. He loved his wife and he was a friad she would find out and break her heart. We managed to convince him to stay and his wife would get him in the morning. We even called her for permission. Sweet and so sad. I'm glad that cop did this and I'm glad I got put on that call. I'm a paramedic. One day bought a guy to the hospital who had a single strand from a metal dog hair brush embedded in his hand, probably not even worth calling me out, should have got a cab to the hospital but hey ho. Basically about an inch long metal splinter, very very thin metal, stuck in the palm of his hand, there wasn't any it of sticking out. Now everyone knows this is an easy one, get some medical pliers, Make a small incision just to get to the end of the splinter and literally pull the thing out without snapping it. Bit of antiseptic wipe and a plaster. 5 minute job. Only bother with local anesthetic is the patient is a screamer. No problem, leave the junior doctor with the guy. I had to get back on the road but I heard the rest from the guys next time I was in. Apparently support staff came back to the room after 20 minutes as the doc wasn't out yet. And it turns out the doc had taken a scalpel and hacked about one inch squared of the guy's hand out, to try to get to the splinter enough to pull it out with just his fingers. When the doc's fingers kept slipping on the splint, covered in blood, he just literally hacked out more and more flesh to try and get a better hand hold on it. There was blood everywhere and after about an inch had been hacked out of it the guy's hand was obviously badly scarred for life, over just nothing, a stupid splinter. Okay not massively horrific, the thing that really gets to me is that they were all strictly told by a senior to not tell the guy or anyone what a complete dog's dinner the whole event had been and the guy was really thankful to the doc and even sent a thank you card, written like a three year old because his hand was so messed up. All the junior doc's colleagues were really supportive of the doc who had a real shrug your shoulders, who cares attitude. For some reason that just sticks with me as there was no recourse whatsoever to the doc. Emergency room nurse. Had an old lady come in by ambulance, near death. She was a DNR, so we weren't going to do much for her. She didn't have any family that we could find. The hospital was full, so we had to keep her in the ER for the night. Again. She was near death. 
When you've seen enough people die, there's no mistaking it, and she was almost there. Barely responsive, pale, cool, breaths were really irregular. Heart rate was up and down, too. We just turned the lights down and kept an eye on her monitor, basically waiting for her to die. About an hour later, she's standing at the door of her room. She'd gotten up and put on all her clothes. We were all like, WTF? One of the nurses went to check on her, and she said she was hungry. Not knowing really what to make of things, we got her a chair, a bedside table, and went to the cafeteria and got her a tray of food. Lady sat there, ate all her food, talked with the staff a little. After about an hour, she told her nurse that she was tired and wanted to lie back down. We helped her back into bed, and within 30 minutes she was dead. Not exactly paranormal, but in 22 years in busy ass, inner city ERs, it's the weirdest thing I've seen. Edit, after reading all the comments, apparently this isn't all that unusual. Still, I think it was remarkable in that she was so close to arresting before she rallied. Either way, it's the one thing that's always stuck with me. I was looking after a patient who needed one-on-one -on -one care when I still worked at one of the public hospitals, who had vivid hallucinations of people crawling on the floor and touching the feet slash legs of anyone not in bed. She went on to describe in great horror story type detail the person she saw touching my feet, while I sat in a chair next to her for part of my shift. It was actually made worse by the fact that was she was a moderately good storyteller and the fact that I knew she was mentally ill slash actually hallucinating and not just pulling my leg for something to pass the time. In the morgue at my hospital, I would always hear knocking coming from inside the freezer. It really creeped me out, especially when the pathologist looked up, grabbed me by the shoulders, stared me straight in the eye and said you hear that? You never open that door when they're knocking. Never. It turned out to be some loose pipes, he thought it was hilarious I didn't sleep that night. I'm a registered nurse and while I was a student I was caring for a lady who had end-stage renal failure, had a nur and was shutting down. We were having a little chat when she stopped, looked over my shoulder and said Bill's here love, I've got to go and swiftly stopped breathing. Read her old notes and Bill was her deceased husband. Night nurse for four years now at an old folks home had a palliative who couldn't sleep because of incredibly vivid hallucinations. She would describe voodoo people around her room that would just stare at her waiting for her to die. I didn't take it seriously until the lady across the hall, who rarely ever spoke, starting seeing them in her room too. Legitimate shivers. Used to work in a personal care home. A couple of times, a day or so after a resident had passed, their call bell would go off in their room. No one was in the room when the call bell went off on any of the occasions. We had one resident die pretty traumatically, nurses had to perform CPR because he was a full coat. That night, the midnight staff said they saw him at the end of the hall just walking down like he always did. Then, the alarm on the door to the outside, it was a secured unit for Alzheimer's slash dementia, went off. It was the door he always tried when he was looking to get out. That second part reminds me of a story my mom, a nurse, told me maybe a decade ago. It's a somewhat similar setting too, a personal care home type of place except, this being Finland, the front door is a sort of airlock config, front door, small room, second door, you get the idea. Minimizes heat loss. So one night the alarm for the front door goes off but nothing on the second door so security calls the nurse on night shift to check if anyone is trying to get inside. She does that and there's just nothing. No one even close to the front door, 
no signs of break-in attempts, the doors are mostly glass, just nothing. After that it's business as usual for the next hour and then one of the residents, who hadn't been doing too well, kicks the can. What makes this whole thing paranormal slash unexplained is that a few weeks later we have the same situation. One of the residents is on her last legs and it's night. Once again the front door alarm goes off while second door is silent and again there's no one there, no damage anywhere, just nothing. And just like before it's business as usual for one hour and then the sick old lady checks out. Mom's religious co-worker said it was God coming to take them. I work a stroke slash telemetry floor on the bot shift. Most of our patients are elderly. Apparently, there are two things that patients see before they pass away. Some will say that two men are walking in their rooms and telling them to get ready to leave. The patient will call and tell us that these men are big and abrasive in their demeanor. They are either terrified or annoyed when they see the two men. The other thing they will see is a little boy who will go into their rooms and try to wake them up. The boy is usually loud and runs around their rooms. The patients will call and ask who's letting children just run around late night. Several nights or even that same shift were coding or cleaning the patient for the funeral home to pick up. My town has two really old hospitals. One no longer functions as overnight, and the stories are unsettling. No one cleans the old ER alone, because all the lights and call bells go off. On other floors there's a kid with his ball, a lady in a white dress, etc. A co-worker was cleaning an entire floor utterly solo, the norm, and bounced between rooms because the cleaning solution stays wet for a few minutes upon returning to a freshly wiped bed, hand prints were clearly visible. Thanks for watching yet another episode of Horror of Den of Misfits YouTube show. See you tomorrow.